against my parents' wishes, I worked a carnival for a year after I graduated high school. I needed a mental break. High school wasn't easy for me. I also wanted to save up as much cash as possible before heading into college, because I didn't want to start off my first year already in tens of thousand dollars of debt. I wanted to pay for all or most of my first year with cash and grants. How did I get started at the carnival, you may ask? It's simple. I went to a carnival shortly after graduation with my friends. It was one of our last days together. The workers all looked like they were having fun, or at least not hating their jobs. I talked to one lady who said it pays well and you get to travel the country. She said they were always looking for new help and encouraged me to apply. I applied and got the job right on the spot at my first interview. I was excited but nervous, and I was even more nervous to tell my parents I wouldn't be interning in my dad's boring office that summer. I was about to head off on a tour of the country and be paid for it. I thought I knew what I was getting into, but I totally didn't. Being a carny is a lot of work. It's fun, and it does pay well if you're assigned to the right games or rides, but it's physically demanding. And you work with and meet some really interesting people. We took off on a Monday to head out for a large carnival in New York to kick off the season. My first assignment was to be running the water race game. Setup was physically intense. I wasn't expecting it, but I was wrecked by the end of each day. Thursday, we were ready to open. I had been through as much training as necessary, and the only thing I was worried about was being engaging enough to get people to come to my booth. The first few hours were a blur. In fact, I think I blacked out from nerves. It was around the lunch hour, and there was a short lull, so I sat down on the edge of my booth to drink some water and rest my feet. A middle-aged man, dressed really oddly for the weather, and for the time period, approached. He stopped and stared at the toys and prizes and acted like he had never seen a carnival game. He was wearing a native headdress, and I wondered to myself how could he wear it without having a heat stroke. I mean, I know it was part of his heritage, and it was a beautiful piece, but it looked like it wouldn't be breathable at all. It was at least 90 out that day, and I remember being uncomfortable in my khaki shorts and teal company t-shirt. Can I help you? Would you like to play? I asked. But he just shook his head and continued to stare for a few more seconds before walking off. The afternoon brought a steady amount of business, but I couldn't help but think of the guy in the headdress from earlier. If I saw him again, I was going to offer him some water, because I was miserable and couldn't imagine how he was feeling. But he never returned to my booth that day. If you don't know, carnies often sleep in giant trailers that have separate bunk rooms, and that's what I did. Later that night, after I washed off the sweat from the day, I was in my bunk watching something mindless on TV. There was a knock on my door, which made me wonder who it could be because I didn't really know anyone yet. But I slid my sandals on and went to answer. There was no one there, or so I thought. As I looked a little further out the door, I froze in shock. It was the man from earlier with the beautiful headdress. But how would he know which one was my trailer? That's what was scaring me at the very moment. He motioned for me to follow him. I hesitated for a few seconds, realizing this is how a lot of 6pm news stories start. But my curiosity got to me, and I motioned for him to hold on. I turned around, grabbed my phone and keys, locked my bunk room up, and stepped towards him apprehensively. The look in his eyes was trustworthy. It was actually one of sadness and pain, not anger or hatred. I let him walk ahead a ways, never getting too close to him. We walked for a little while, down a trail into a patch of woods. It was dark, but I was using my phone as a flashlight. He stopped in front of a rather big, very old-looking tree, pointing at something. Then, right in front of me, he disappeared. I don't mean he ran off. I mean he was there one second and gone the next. He disappeared.
I was somewhat in shock, but I had to go look at the tree and see if he was pointing at anything in particular. At first, it just looked like any old tree, but then I saw a tiny opening in the trunk. I saw something shiny, so against my better judgment, I reached in and grabbed it. It was an arrowhead with the letter A etched into it. Whoever he was, the man in the headdress must have wanted me to have this arrowhead, so I took it with me back to my bunk room. Back in my room, I took to Google to look into a few things. I tried googling the type and colors of headdress he was wearing, but I couldn't come up with anything specific as far as a tribe name or his possible rank within the tribe. I then googled the town we were in. I stayed up far too late diving into the rich history of the town. The fairgrounds we were on was actually an old Indian burial ground. The rest of the week and weekend, I never saw the old man again. It was as if he wanted me to have his arrowhead because I was the first one to admit or show that I could see him. I still have the old arrowhead. I keep it in a small protective glass case. It's a unique piece of history that, for whatever reason, that man in the fancy headdress wanted me to have. Okay, that was a cool story. I'm part native myself but I would be no help in identifying what kind of headdress he was wearing either. He obviously wanted you to have the arrowhead for whatever reason, and it's cool you've held on to it through the years. I would too. Thanks for writing in. It was a fun story to read, and I think a lot of people will really enjoy this one. If you have a paranormal story you want me to tell in an upcoming video, email it to the address in the description below. Please give the video a like and subscribe if you haven't. Subscribing is free and it helps the channel immensely. Thank you all for being here. And with that, I'll see you tomorrow, friends.